Live out all your head banging dreams. Yes. Shake it out. Don't be afraid. Shake it out. Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be showing you how I get this voluminous, waved, curled, whatever you want to call it, hair. I do use a straightener for this. So grab your straightener and we're going to go ahead and jump right into this tutorial. Yes? Okay, so my hair is freshly washed from last night. So make sure you brush out your hair. Look at this ancient brush. I should probably get a new brush. I've had this brush since I was probably eight years old. And you know, if it still works, if it still works, why replace it? So make sure any knots are brushed through and everything's feeling nice and smooth. Um, you can use a heat protector. I actually use a leave-in conditioner after I get out of the shower, which kind of doubles as the heat protector. So I would go ahead and use that now if you go use that. Okay, so I actually, as you may have seen in the title, I actually curl my hair with a straightener. This is a chi straightener. I've had this thing forever. Like these things are durable as hell, not sponsored, but they are so fire. Um, I've had this thing for probably over a decade and it still works just as well as the day I bought it. So, um, chi is great, but whatever straightener you have will totally work. So, um, the way I do it is kind of random. You could do it more professional and split your hair up and like tie it back and do all of that. You could totally do that. But after doing this enough times, I am extremely lazy. So I kind of just wing it, you know? So I like to start at the back of my hair and I'll go ahead and tell you, avoid if you have short pieces in the front of your hair like I do that frame your face, leave those alone, okay? Leave those for last and we're gonna do something a little different for them. But go ahead, I like to start in the back and I just grab a piece of my hair about yay wide. Anything about that size or even smaller, I wouldn't go bigger than about this size. And here's what we're gonna do. You take the straightener, you're gonna clamp down twist it outwards, and then you twist the hair under, you continue the turn, and then you pull it all the way out. I feel like that was a extremely confusing way of explaining it, so I'm gonna do it again, don't worry. And then I like to just let it go slowly throughout all of it, and then I twist it with my finger, and then boom, it doesn't look like anything yet, but we just throw it to the back, and she'll be a part of some fabulousness later, okay? Let me show you again because I, for a long time, my cousin taught me how to do this and I still could not wrap the idea of what the heck she was doing. So, muscle memory definitely helps. Just keep working on it. Okay, so we're gonna clasp down, turn the hair inward, outward, and turn the straightener outward. <laughs> You know, I really thought I would be better at explaining this, but I'm realizing that I'm not. And hopefully you're gathering something from this. If anything, I hope you're admiring this adorably lilac outfit I have on. Okay, we're just pulling it all the way through. Almost there. If your hair's smoking, that means it's working. Just kidding, me maybe a little. Okay, going through piece by piece. And I do kind of like to start in the underside of my hair, not the pieces on top. I save those for last. So I like to go in the underside of my hair first. Let me get closer so you can see this. Glass, turn the hair in to out, turn the straightener. You can also hold it here till it cools if you want. I'm too, I'm, I'm trying to get things done and with the swiftness, you know, so I don't really bother with all of that. Honestly, and the, this is one of those things, like you think you know how to do it when you're watching it, and then when you try it, you're like, what the hell? So it definitely took me a little bit to understand the mechanics of what it is, 
But once you get it, you get it. Like, you'll never forget it. And um, it is actually a pretty fast process to do. I find that this is much faster than curling my hair. And I hate curling irons. I don't know if anybody still uses curling irons. I think a lot of people have shifted to the wands. But curling irons annoy the hell out of me. I always end up burning out of my fingers. So I love doing this. I feel like they end up being a much more natural. And I don't even know if I'd call these like curls because they're not like curls curls. It's more like a wave, a voluminous wave. So you see how those are starting to come together back there. Also, if it's annoying to you that the ones you've already curled keep popping in, you could totally use a hair tie or just a hair clip to kind of clip them or move them out of the way and secure them there. But again, once you do this enough times, you just want to move as quickly as possible, you know? that ask me what my haircut is when I ask the hairdresser. Um, because of COVID, I actually learned how to cut my own hair at home. And I watched this YouTube video and she essentially just tells you how to cut long layers. So if that helps at all, long layers. Okay, so now you can see I'm getting to these shorter pieces I have in the front. I'm gonna start more up top for these. Grabbing the pieces that are up towards my roots and then curling those the same way. Flip the hair under, flip the straightener outward. You're rotating the straightener with your hand. are burning because I got like two hours of sleep last night but we here we here we doing the thing sometimes you'll end up with like these little strings that didn't get cut like added into the mix and I'll just throw them back into a bundle I already did and redo it okay this guy right here we're gonna split it so it's just a little piece I'm gonna curl this one This last piece, we're going to leave it for now. So if you have shorter pieces in the front, just leave it for now, okay? So this is what half of it looks like. Done. Please wait. We're going to make it look cute, okay? It's looking a little... What is this? This reminds me of when I was like 13. It was super in to gel curl your hair. And I'd have gel curls and then straight bangs. Who remembers that? We're all hoping to forget those times. Okay, on to the other side. Okay, so for the other side, it's probably proper that you do it with your other hand. I, however, have never bothered to do this. <laughs> I feel like the majority of this video is just telling you that I'm extremely lazy with how I do my hair. So I'm gonna do this side the same way I do this side, which is probably wrong but it still looks good. So, with that being said, I'm gonna take the straightener, clasp it, turn the hair inward, turn the straightener outward. Yeah, just like that. Then we pull it all the way through. If your hair is not moisturized or maybe it's a little drier or if your hair has product in it, like, um, like a gel or anything like that, you might find that your straightener skips It'll be like, as you're trying to pull it through. So the best thing I could recommend for that is just like, when you have like fresh, freshly washed hair that's brushed all the way through, it should be okay. Um, or maybe just moisturizing your hair with some sort of moisturizing product. And that way it flows a little bit smoother. Sometimes when it's really dry, it'll do that like choppy effect and um, it'll put like crinkles in your hair, it's kind of annoying. And your hand that's on the straightener 
never comes off the straightener when you're turning. So something to think about. All you're doing is turning your wrist. You never have to take it off. Also, you get really used to touching the hot ass hair. Um, you might be thinking, Dorothy, didn't you just run your straightener through that piece? Isn't your hair really hot? Doesn't it burn your hands? I'm so used to it. I think I probably burned off all my fingertips by this point. And it's not nearly as hot as touching a direct curling iron. I've learned my lesson many times from curling irons. They scare me. And make sure you get the end pieces really nice and warmed in there because you want the end pieces to show the most pop. The rest of it can just be, you know, nice and wavy in case you don't put as much energy there, but make sure you really get that end piece so it gives it that nice curl in the end. This usually takes me about 15 to 20 minutes to do, so it's not bad. It's not bad at all. And make sure as you're running the hair through, it's staying within the space of the heat clamps. If it's moving too far inward and it's not running under the heat, that's a no-no. pieces that have now been curled except for my two shorter pieces in the front. So this is something new that I've been doing. I did not always used to do this. I used to just curl these pieces like I did the rest of my hair, but because they are shorter, I've been trying this new technique. So I'm just going to show you what I've been doing. So pull the pieces from each side together in one like these. And then you're going to take the straightener and you're going to curve it so it's flipping the hair upwards. I have some pieces that are not going under the heat, so that's exactly what I meant. And then you see it do this, a little flipperoni. Yeah, my, my camera focus is having a ball today. Just to show you that again, from the side, so you're flipping it. Okay. So, this could be messy. Let's hope it looks decent. If not, I can fix it. Now, here's the most important part of this hair look. You go crazy and you flip it and you shake it out, all right? Now, take all of this voluminous hair, Those front pieces came out a little interesting. Might have to fix this. But can we talk about the volume difference? Can we talk about the volume difference? Wow. And um, if those front pieces come out a little crazy, you can just tweak them or you can decide to curl them, you know, the same way as the rest of your hair. And you just bring your hands through your hair, you know, add all that volume. Don't be afraid to just flip it around and shake it up. Look at all that volume. And I didn't put any kind of volume products in my hair whatsoever. It's literally just the technique that makes it this voluminous when you shake it out and everything. And um, a little tip, whenever I'm like, say I'm about to take a photo or a video or something, what I like to do to like really keep that volume in front, I pull my hands back and then I scoop under I don't know how to explain this. And then I like give it that little floomph. <laughs> the little floomph, you know, the little floomph. So there you have it. I hope you guys were able to understand what the heck I was trying to show you. If you weren't, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I promise just keep practicing it and you'll get the hang out of it. Um, you'll get the hang of it. And then when you do, it'll click and then you got it. If you guys want me to do more hair things, makeup things, 
let me know. And if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. If you like videos like this, please give it a like. Subscribe so you can see my face more. I post new videos every Friday, so I look forward to seeing you on the next Friday, okay? Until then.